Welcome to Realty Bites with me, Charon Bajwa. I'm a licensed real estate broker with Remax One in New Jersey. And today I would like to discuss how to go about buying a distressed or a foreclosure property. Foreclosures or distressed properties can be very attractive to any buyer, especially if you're an investor. So let's begin by trying to understand what exactly defines a foreclosure. A foreclosure is an action that the lender takes to obtain possession to a property where the borrower is behind on the mortgage in the failure of any attempts to work out alternatives with the lender. Through a foreclosure, the lender is basically trying to recover the money that is owed to them by the borrower. Foreclosure is an expensive process for the lender, therefore it usually occurs when all other alternatives have been exhausted. Foreclosure properties usually sell below market value, therefore they appear extremely attractive. However, the below market selling price comes attached with a lot more research and risk involved with purchasing a foreclosure property. There may be unforeseen expenses because you may not be able to look at the property and assess the cost of repairs that might be needed. The property may have liens or title issues that you may not have had the opportunity to research and examine. It is important to understand the different stages of a foreclosure so that you can make an informed decision about your purchase. Number one, the pre-foreclosure process. This happens when the lender issues what is called a Liz Pendants Notice to the borrower who defaults. This notice is filed with the county where the property is located to provide public notice to third parties that a legal proceeding is pending in a New Jersey court asserting a claim against title or some other ownership interest in the property. New Jersey has one of the longest wait times for foreclosures. Depending upon the court schedule, it could take more than eight months for an uncontested foreclosure to take place. This process may be delayed further if the borrower disputes the foreclosure or asks for adjournments or files for bankruptcy. Initially, the borrower gets 35 days to respond to a foreclosure complaint and after another 45 days, the final judgment can be entered by the lender and a writ of execution is issued and delivered to the sheriff to carry out the foreclosure sale process. The defaulting borrower is given at least 10 days notice before the foreclosure sale can take place. The second type of distressed property that you can buy is a short sale. Whenever the owner of a property tries to sell it below the amount that he or she owes to their bank, it is known as a short sale. A short sale needs lender approval and that will only happen if it makes financial sense to the lender, making it a better option for them than a full foreclosure. The lender also does their own price evaluation of the property to verify if the offer is within a reasonable amount of the fair market value. The seller going for a short sale would need to prove that they are in a financial distress by providing evidence. This is a good alternative for the borrower in the sense that it does not affect their credit as negatively as a typical foreclosure does. And at the same time, it is a better alternative for the lender also because they would avoid the high expenses involved in a full foreclosure. The third type of distressed property purchase can be made at an auction. In the absence of any alternatives being worked out, the property gets auctioned. There are two types of auctions. First is an in-person traditional sheriff sale where a buyer would typically need to bring a cashier's check for the deposit amount to the auction. There is in-person bidding that takes place and the highest bidder wins. The second type of auction that is quite prevalent nowadays is an online auction where the bidding takes place online over a period of a couple of days and the buyer puts a deposit down once he or she wins the bid. There are several auction related websites that you can explore these days. The last type of distressed property is bank owned. You may not believe it, but several properties do not get sold at auctions when they do not meet the minimum reserve that the lender requires. In that event, the bank may actually end up owning the property and it becomes an REO, real estate owned. At this time, the bank can decide to make some basic repairs if needed and relist the property through a real estate broker like ourselves. This kind of a transaction is the least risky of them all because it usually comes with a clear title, free of any liens, and you have the opportunity to walk through and assess your expenses. As far as pricing is concerned, bank-owned homes are usually priced very close to market value, but banks are more willing to negotiate than the typical homeowner because the property is a liability that the bank still wants to get rid of. Most people are not aware that New Jersey has a statutory right of redemption, 
which allows the borrower to redeem their foreclosed property within 10 days of it being foreclosed by making the full payment of their outstanding loan plus the costs incurred in executing the foreclosure. So don't start celebrating until these 10 days have passed. Who would not be interested in making a great deal on a distressed property? Everyone I know. However, you must have a clear understanding of the costs that you might incur in terms of repairs, paying off liens, and other delinquencies. In fact, for tenant-occupied properties, you may even be responsible for any required eviction process as well. If you were buying a short sale or a bank-owned property, you would normally be able to walk through the home and even conduct home inspections if you would like. The seller or the bank will not agree to make any repairs from the home inspections, but at least it will give you the confidence and knowledge on what it would take to fix any issues if they exist. Another caveat with buying a distressed property is that the closing date is usually very fluid. It depends upon many factors and clearances that may be needed and should just be treated as a date in the sand. So if you are planning to move into the property yourself, make sure you have a backup plan in case you cannot move in on time. Before I close this topic on distressed properties today, I would like to offer a few tips if you're interested in pursuing them. Number one, shortlist the properties of your interest well in advance so that you can view the property if it is permitted and get a preliminary title search done on it. You can contact us and we can put you in touch with the title company who would do this for you at a minimal or no charge. Second, have your agent do a comparative market analysis on the property to give you a fair idea on its current market value. This is an important step so that you can understand how attractive the deal would be. Third, read all the fine print of the foreclosure documents and purchase contracts. Know what you might lose if you do not get to closing. Many auctions forfeit your deposit. I hope you find this information useful. All the best in your pursuit for a distressed property and let us know if we could be of any assistance. Thank you for tuning in.